It can be hard trying to be happy, and it's even hard to find fulfillment. Fulfillment can be vague, but in this video, I'll define it as long-term happiness. There are many ideas on how to be fulfilled and live a good life. So in this video, we will look at Stoicism and Nietzsche to learn how to live a good life. Stoicism is a philosophy founded way back in Athens, in the early 3rd century BC. You might have heard of some famous Stoics like Seneca and Marcus Aurelius. Stoics understand that most things in life are out of your control. You can't decide if you get hired or fired. You can't decide if you stay healthy or get sick. You might be able to do things that make the outcome you want to happen more probable, but you don't get the final say. They understand that although they can't control the events around them, they can control how they respond to the events. How you perceive something is in your control. For example, when you get fired, you can see it as you weren't good enough for the job, or you deserve better and it was good you got out. Stoics believe that the goal of life is to approach virtue and avoid vice. Virtues are ideas or actions that are good for everyone. Vices are ideas or actions that are bad for everyone. The two virtues that can help you find fulfillment in life are justice and piety. Justice is about focusing on what you can control and doing what's good for society. What's good for society is often good for the individual. Think about all the great things we have today like the internet. These are products someone created and shared with the world. Piety is when you understand you can't control everything that happens around you. Your duty is to hold yourself accountable for your own actions and to do what you can to serve the common good. So how can you apply this knowledge to be fulfilled? When something happens to you, try to look at the positives instead of dwelling on the negatives. Think about what that event can allow you to do. Accept that the event happened to you and don't dwell on how things could have gone differently. This will help you let go of the past. Also, you should try to spread positivity and do what's good for society. You don't need to do something revolutionary like create a cure for cancer. Simple things like helping other people out and being nice to others are just as impactful. Helping others is one of the greatest sources of fulfillment. It helps boost your mood and it boosts the other party's mood as well. To be fulfilled, you should approach virtue and avoid vice. Nietzsche is one of the most influential philosophers. You've probably heard of him before and he had many ideas, but we will only focus on his ideas for living a good life in this video. He believed that a fulfilling life requires embracing difficulty and adversity. Hardship and happiness are correlated. If you diminish one, the other one will also go down. Here's one of his writings on this subject. What if pleasure and this pleasure were so tied together? that whoever wanted to have as much as possible of one must also have as much as possible of the other, that whoever wanted to learn to jubilate up to the heavens will also have to be prepared for depression onto death. You have the choice, either as little displeasure as possible, painlessness in brief, or as much displeasure as possible as the price for the growth of an abundance of subtle pleasures and joys that have rarely been relished yet. If you decide for the former and desire to diminish and lower the level of human pain, you also have to diminish and lower the level of their capacity for joy. I agree with his ideas and I think that it's a great starting point to learn how to be fulfilled. You won't understand the feeling of happiness if you never go through pain and suffering. Your greatest joys are close to your greatest pains. Think about the last time you completed a long-term goal or project. The feeling of completing it was amazing. But to get there, you put in a lot of work and you probably dealt with doubts and failures along the way. If that goal or project was easy to complete and you barely dealt with any adversity along the way, you probably didn't feel too fulfilled and accomplished. You don't reach fulfillment by avoiding pain. You reach it by realizing pain and adversity is a natural step on the path to fulfillment. So how can you apply this knowledge? If you have a goal you want to accomplish or a project you want to complete, go for it. Don't let a fear of failure stop you from taking action. Don't be afraid to challenge yourself to grow as a person. One thing to note is that you should still take care of yourself and do things that make you happy. Let's look at this scenario. Say this person is in his 20s and he wants to be the next Elon Musk. He's super ambitious and has a project he wants to complete. He works very hard at it 
and sacrifices everything in the pursuit of his goal. He doesn't have time for sleep, social activities, or relationships. His health even starts declining. This doesn't sound like a fulfilling life, because this person is lacking in multiple areas of life. They might be happy with the progress they're making towards their goal, but it's hard to be happy and fulfilled when everything else in their life is falling apart. Work towards your goals, but make sure you don't sacrifice everything to the point where your life is falling apart. There are more thinkers and schools of thoughts with ideas on how to live a fulfilling life. I chose to talk about Stoicism and Nietzsche because I believe the ideas are practical. I hope this video has taught you something helpful. Have you heard of Stoicism or Nietzsche before? Leave a comment below and check out the video shown on the end screen about how to be self-aware since it can help you be happy.